75% of all data on the internet is video. Uh, people spend hours every day watching video. The average home has a TV on probably four to six hours a day and uh, video uses a huge amount of data, much more than any other kind of information that we use. Uh, so we work mostly on trying to minimize the amount of data you need to get a good video picture. As time moves on, we can do a lot more computation on any amount of data. So things that were not practical 10 years ago become practical. Uh, also, our, our uh, understanding of what to do has improved a lot over time. The, the theory behind this stuff has gotten a lot more sophisticated. Uh, so now, in the more modern uh, technologies, we do a lot of adaptive localized processing where we we uh, segment things and, and segment them further if it helps and use sophisticated motion representation technology, uh, lots of fancy signal processing, and more and more becomes practical over time. The, uh, the complexity of the encoding process tends to increase over time quite a bit. I'm Gary Sullivan, I work for Microsoft, and I participate in standardization work a lot. I've worked, I've, uh, been the chairman of several standards groups uh, developing video compression algorithms and also some image compression. H.264 is also known as MPEG-4 AVC or Advanced Video Coding. It's a standard of the ITU, ISO, and IEC standards bodies in the international community and it is today the most dominant uh, video co uh, compression technology in the world. We uh, developed it in the early 2000s and first standardized it in 2003. Uh, at, at the time, there was another previous technology known as MPEG-2 video that was dominant, and it was really responsible for uh, digital video becoming a reality as we know it, uh, but it was not as good at compressing data. Uh, so some people were skeptical when we developed uh, AVC saying, well, MPEG-2 is too entrenched. Uh, nobody needs this new thing. But it turned out being able to compress much better was a compelling value proposition and, and it pretty much took over. So the, the proportion of MPEG-2 used today relative to H.264 AVC is pretty small, I think. The next beyond that is uh, HEVC, also known as H.265 or MPEG-H Part 2. Again, it's a major standard endorsed by all the big international standards bodies. Uh, and it's the next generation beyond AVC. And it, again, is about twice as good at compression, which means you can cut roughly cut in half the amount of data you need to get a, a video picture with the same level of quality for whatever resolution or frame rate you're, you're talking about. It compresses about twice as good as, as H.264 AVC did. And moving forward, there's, there's a lot more still happening. We're uh, looking to probably create another new standard around 2020 that again will be another big international standard. We have studied uh, also like stereo and multi-view and uh, compressing depth information along with the video pictures. Uh, often you can repurpose the same algorithms more or less to, to do the compression of, a, of a, a different kind of a source video technology. Uh, also, you know, image resolutions have been changing. We used to use what we call standard definition or even lower for web video. And now we've moved to, well, with, with uh, H.264 AVC, we kind of moved to uh, uh, HD, also known as 2K. And now we're transitioning to 4K, Ultra HD. And uh, also a high dynamic range video is a big phenomenon emerging now. And on the horizon, yes, we have uh, omnidirectional video, augmented reality and virtual reality. A lot of that today is based on just transforming the data and then compressing it with a regular video coder uh, in a conventional fashion. We're, we're trying to figure out whether 
you can do better than that with uh, the new 360 video, but so far, most of the techniques are still just sort of transforming the, the 360 degree video into a rectangular image and then coding that as if it was regular video. There's always a lot of pressure because people always want higher resolution video, they want higher frame rate video, more realistic pictures, and uh, so there's always a drive for higher quality, which always means more data. That's a huge pressure on the internet and all other global networks where video is transmitted. Uh, so it's just tremendously important to do whatever you can to improve compression over time. Ultimately, you have to have a technology that's both capable scientifically and also economic and widely deployed and accessible to the people who want to use it. So I joined a video conferencing company in 1991 and I started participating in some of these standardization efforts and it's, it's really been quite a transformation since then. Everything has, you know, all the hopes that people thought maybe something could happen have really come to now, you know, there's nothing non-digital, I think, that people use daily for, for video and their qualities improved dramatically and we use it in so many applications in so many ways that people didn't, didn't think about really even in 1990 when I got started.